Welcome to a Legendarium special about the humiliating death of Emperor Commodus. Most of us know Emperor Commodus from the 2000 film Gladiator, directed by Ridley Scott, in which, spoiler alert, Commodus perishes in the Roman Colosseum at the hands of a vengeful Maximus. His real death was very different. During the 84 years prior to Commodus' rule, an age known as the Five Good Emperors, Rome thrived under emperors Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and finally Commodus' father, the revered philosopher emperor Marcus Aurelius. Tragically, Marcus's most grievous fault lay in his disastrous decision to appoint his incompetent and unbalanced 16-year-old son Commodus as co-emperor and successor towards the end of his reign. Though he made several attempts to reform his son by forcing him to serve in army camps, Marcus never grasped that his son should not be allowed to hold power before his death death in 180 AD. Commodus became obsessed with sports both in the arena and the bedchamber. Along with his wife Crispina and a chief mistress named Marcia, he kept a harem of 600 concubines divided between young women and boys. He turned over the administration of the empire to his mistress Marcia, said to be a crypto-Christian, and a series of corrupt favorites. After Commodus exiled his wife Brutia Crispina, he treated Marcia as both wife and empress, yet his true passion lay in the Colosseum. Rome's young emperor horrified polite society by fighting as a gladiator. Emperor Commodus especially enjoyed hurling javelins and firing arrows at creatures from a raised platform. He dispatched lions, leopards, elephants, hippos, bears, rhinos, and giraffes, sometimes a hundred at a time. On one occasion, using crescent-headed arrows, he shot off the heads of a large flock of ostriches that, although headless, continued to run around the arena as the crowd roared its approval. He once even fought a group of Rome's crippled and sickly citizens after dressing them as monsters and arming them with sponges painted to look like stones. After shooting the cripples down with arrows, he rubbed the blood of his victims upon his clothes and into his hair. He once even ordered dwarves to fight each other to the death with meat cleavers and served a hunchback covered with mustard at an imperial banquet. Things became far worse after the Great Fire of 191 AD. It left Roman shambles and destroyed many great landmarks like the Temple of Vesta. Yet Commodus seized the chance to hold a second founding of the city and declared himself to be the second founder of Rome. He renamed Rome the city of Colonia Lucia Ania Commodiana. He declared that Romans would be known as Commodiani, the legions renamed Commodianiae, the Egyptian grain fleet would be renamed the Alexandria Commodiana Togata, and the Senate would be entitled the Commodian Fortunate Senate. Imagine being a Roman citizen going to listen to the newsreader and learning that you were no longer a Roman, but a Commodianiae. Commodus decided to celebrate New Year's Eve of 192 not from the imperial palace as custom demanded, but in the gladiators' barracks. On New Year's Day, he would march in the streets, dressed in elaborate armor among a procession of gladiator slaves to celebrate the city's rebirth. This would be part of a special plebeian games in which Emperor Commodus himself would fight. 
his mistress Marcia, and his recently appointed commander of the Praetorian Guard, Quintus Aemilius Latus, realized that Commodus went too far by marching alongside gladiators, considered to be no better than actors, slaves, or other disreputable people. Marcia herself fell to her knees and wept as she begged her partner to give up the mad scheme. Instead, Commodus became incensed and began making veiled threats against both Marcia and Latus. After all, Commodus fancied himself Hercules, so what did he have to fear from a couple of mere mortals? According to the Historia Augusta, by New Year's Eve, one of Marcia's slave boys found a tablet that Commodus made and gave it to his mistress. Marcia found it to be a list of names that Commodus wanted executed as part of his New Year's Day celebrations, and she found both her name on the list and that of Quintus Latus. She shared it with Latus and the palace chamberlain Eclectus, and they immediately agreed upon a plan to retire Commodus from both politics and life. They would make the city prefect Publius Pertinax the new emperor. At first, Marcia appeared to keep to her routine. She brought Commodus a glass of wine prior to his bath, flavored with poison. The poisoned wine made the emperor violently ill, and he began vomiting, yet he still staggered into his bath. Because of the emperor's frequent drinking binges, nobody took great notice of him throwing up. Yet Marcia knew this was different, and paid one of Commodus's friends, a champion wrestler named Narcissus, who served as the emperor's personal trainer, to finish the poison's job. Narcissus entered Commodus's bathhouse, and at first the sickly and reeling emperor appeared to greet his friend warmly. Narcissus greeted the emperor by putting his hands around his throat and strangling the emperor. Within a few minutes, the mad emperor had died in his own bathwater. A man who fancied himself Hercules died in his bathroom, still covered in his own vomit, being strangled by an unclothed man. Afterwards, the conspirators loaded Commodus's lifeless corpse into a heap of dirty laundry, and a group of loyal slaves smuggled the imperial remains out of the palace to a secret place. Word soon spread through the city that the mad emperor came down with a slight case of death. While some of the citizens, amused by Commodus's antics, were dismayed, the city's ruling class rejoiced. When the Senate met, they declared Commodus to be a public enemy, the murderer of Rome, and even commanded for his unclothed body to be dragged through the streets so that the plebeians could hurl feces and insults at it. Yet Publius Pertinax, who took the throne after providing the Praetorian guard with an enormous bribe, seized the body and laid Commodus to rest in Hadrian's mausoleum. The Senate restored the name of Rome and set about throwing the many statues that Commodus put up in his honor into the Tiber. They even carved his name off any public buildings where his men placed it years prior. However, Pertinax's own Praetorian guard murdered him only a few years later after he failed to produce the enormous bribe that he promised them, and this led to a civil war called the Year of the Five Emperors. During these upheavals, most of the ringleaders of Commodus's assassination, including Marcia and Latus, died at the hands of this or that faction as power changed hands in the city many times. In the end, Rome wound up with one emperor, Septimius Severus, founder of the Severan dynasty. Hoping to reconcile members of the still powerful former imperial family, Septimius Severus gave Commodus what he always wanted 
and declared him a god, an honor given to many dead Roman emperors. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.